Well, hello again. This is Rupert Matthews, National Campaign Manager for Better Off Out. Now, last week, our podcast took the form of a report from the London European Referendum Conference. It was organised by Gerard Batten. He's the UKIP member of the European Parliament for London. Uh, And this week, we return to that conference for two special pieces. The first is a talk by Councillor Lawrence Webb of UKIP. The second is the full speech that was given by Professor Tim Congdon, one of the most intelligent of the economists working for Brexit. So first we have Councillor Lawrence Webb, uh, and as you'll hear, he's talking about an exciting initiative that he managed to get underway uh, on the council in London, where he's one of the councillors. Right, I'm at the uh, London UKIP uh, referendum conference. We've had a fantastic time, some great speakers here. Um, But I bumped into Lawrence Webb. Now, you're the uh, leader of UKIP on the London Borough of Havering Council. Correct. Uh, And one thing that was mentioned here earlier, I thought absolutely fantastic, um, you managed to get the council to pass a motion uh, saying they thought Britain should leave the European Union. But you don't control the council. It must have been cross-party initiative. How how on earth did you manage to get that done? Absolutely. The motion was actually that uh, the council agreed that Britain would be better off out of the EU. Obviously, we can't leave. Uh, There was some controversy about why we were posting now. Well, in the next few weeks, we're going to be setting our budgets as our councils up and down the country, and I'm sure in most cases it's going to see the services streamlined, if not cut, and at the same time council tax is going up. So I thought it was absolutely relevant that we discuss and debate at this point you know, what the costs of EU regulation is to local authorities. And there are vast many areas uh, where EU rules and regulations directly impact on the cost of council supplying those services. And of course in many cases they're just passed on to the ta- council taxpayer. So um, with a discussion with the other members of the group, to so say there's only six UKIP councillors out of 54, so this was very much a cross-party motion with people from the Conservatives, independents and independent residents all agreeing that Britain would be better off outside the EU. Uh, and the discussion on the night covered things like the landfill directive and the cost implication to local authorities. It's reckon, reckoned that that adds about £50 to the average council tax bill. There are other things like the free movement of people, which is fundamental, a fundamental principle of the EU, not up for renegotiation by Cameron, and of course that has a massive impact on local authorities. We all know about the housing crisis. There isn't a housing crisis, there's an immigration crisis. And the point here is that if someone from Spain presents themselves to a local authority, that local authority has a statutory obligation to house them. Now, that person could have a string of villas in Marbella. We don't know about it. They present themselves as homeless. We must find them a home. And, of course, what that has done is it's forced up rents. Many people have been uh, forced out of accommodation, evicted by landlords who think they can make more money elsewhere. And what it's resulted in is a lot of families being pushed into bed and breakfast. We've got a proliferation of HMOs, housing multiple occupation in the borough. And, of course, when somebody is in bed and breakfast, that's a direct cost to the council. In addition to that... We're having to massively increase the the school places because, once again, a child presenting themselves to local authority, we have a legal obligation to find a school place for them. And it is impossible to set a meaningful budget when we don't know year on year how many people are coming into the borough. When we had a fairly static population, you could predict year on year what the population was going to be. It's now exploded and there's a huge cost to local authorities. So it was absolutely right that we debated it. And at the end of the debate, we all agreed that Havering, on Havering Council that Britain would be better off out of the EU. Well, that's fantastic news. Now, presumably you managed to get some uh, media coverage with this as well. Uh, yes, it uh, picked up. I think it's been on many of the online uh, newspapers. BBC uh, London News, ITV London News have covered it. Uh, I was on the BBC World tonight. Uh, I think we very much caught the in camp by surprise <laughs> and uh, but no there's been a lot of publicity there's still ongoing I shall be on Sunday politics uh, tomorrow uh, where you'll see some of the debate live or you could indeed watch it on the Havering webcam if you wanted to. That's fantastic well thank you very much. Uh, that was Councillor Lawrence Webb from the London Borough of Havering where they've passed a motion uh, saying that Britain would be better off out of the European Union. If any of you listeners uh, want extra details of that, you can send me an email. Uh, I'll get the details up on our website so you can look at it. And indeed, if any of you are councillors and want to uh, support a similar initiative uh, around your way, that would be a great thing to do. Uh, and again, we'll be 
putting onto our website, www.betteroffout.net, uh, details about how you can go about doing that. Thank you very much, Councillor Webb. Thank you. Thank you. And our second piece this week is a speech given by Professor Tim Congdon. Uh, now, this speech, as you will hear, is uh, a very measured uh, and uh, carefully constructed look at the way in which the European Union impacts on the British economy uh, and on other aspects of our national life. Uh, it was delivered to an absolutely packed hall at the Abbey Centre. There were over 200 people present. Uh, in places, of course, you can hear uh, the crowd uh, interrupting, so I'm afraid that's the nature of these live recordings. Uh, but it really is worth listening to. One of the most interesting talks I've I've ever listened to. Thank you, Tim. Well, a great pleasure to be here this afternoon. Um, as you know, after dinner, speakers crack jokes. And uh, I'm an after, one of the after-lunch speakers, and I've been given the graveyard slot, as it's sometimes called. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, it gets, it gets worse, because as you may also know, I'm an economist, and economics has been called a dismal science. So you see before you a dismal scientist. <laughs> Having said all that, um, I was economic spokesman, my name's Tim Congdon, I was economic spokesman for UK Independence Party from 2010 to 2014. And uh, one of the many pleasures I had in that role was indeed to put together these documents. Gerard started them back in 2006, uh, and um, we'll try and make them annual. They're quite hard work, but uh, there we are. Um, I saw my job as economic spokesman as being to provide facts, provide ideas, and so on, um, for us, the, 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 the poor bloody infantry, LPDI, uh, in our debates that we had over the last few years. Obviously, obviously, we're on the threshold of a very big national debate now. And uh, again, my job, among up with other people, is to provide facts, ideas, arguments, and so on. And that's what I want to do this afternoon. You win uh, debates first because you have good arguments, you have the, the, the right arguments, you win debates uh, because you believe in those arguments and you convey them with passion, conviction, with belief, and so on. And finally, thirdly, you persuade other people uh, that you're right. Uh, and, uh, and then you win the debate. So, what I want to do is to set out some of the reasons why I believe you must leave the European Union. They are economic arguments. May also just say before I move on that although, yes, I'm an economist, just one scientist, but in fact, to me, this isn't really about economics, it's about you know, my country, it's about politics, it's about my identity, and even if by leaving the European Union I was to be poorer, my country was to be poorer, I would still want Britain out of the European Union. <laughs> who we are and what, we, you know, what kind of country we want to live in, of course it is. Having said all that, um, actually, we would be much better off out. Much better off out. One of the key points that Jared did back in 2006 and in subsequent uh, issues of, of this document was to distinguish between two kinds of costs that we incur because we're in the European Union. There's the direct cost, and that is the cost that, because we pay taxes to the government, the government then pays this money to European Union institutions, and this is a direct payment to the EU institutions for the EU's purposes. Okay. But then there are many other costs of an indirect nature. Um, and what I really want to hammer home this afternoon is that the indirect costs are much larger and I'm going to just spend a few minutes um, on that. Now, on the direct costs, they have risen sharply uh, while David Cameron has been Prime Minister. And one of the worst things about David Cameron is that he's a liar. He has said, while he's been Prime Minister, that he 
you know, uniquely uh, has actually reduced the European Union budget. Oh no, he hasn't. And he certainly hasn't reduced Britain's contribution to the EU's budget because the figures are actually in official white papers to show that he is wrong. Uh, the, the cost um, of, uh, you pay some money in, we get some money back, there's the rebate and there's some spending here, uh, but the net cost to Britain um, has risen from about 4 billion or so when Blair and, and, and Gordon Brown were Prime Minister to over 10 billion in the last couple of years. The exact figure, by the way, is um, you wonder what 10 billion pounds is. <clears throat> it's, um, I think, when you think about this for, for a household, it's the cost of a nice weekend holiday. All right? It's not dramatic. But actually, it's a cost. You know, some people actually save up for the weekend holiday, you know, six months' time, and it's a cost. The gross cost, what we pay in and the sum comes back, is more like £20 billion, £55 billion a day. And my view, that's a better measure of the cost, because some of the money that comes back is very badly spent, and it's not just by the way you keep view that it's badly spent. Governments, all parties, have wanted the spending of that money repatriated because they know it's spent badly by the EU bureaucracy. So the direct cost is £10 billion plus, or about £20 billion, if you want to give the full figure. It's about, I would say, one and a quarter percent of GDP. And I know I'm an economist, I've already used the phrase GDP. That's how much we produce as a nation. It's a bit more than one percent of what we produce as a nation. It's an issue. Um, of course, the other 99% is ours, so it should be. But let me now just emphasize that the indirect costs are much, much larger. These costs are under various headings, uh, and you'll see it all set out in this document. Uh, and by the way, in the rather bulky documents I produced in 2012 and 2013, all on my website, by the way, timgong.com, um, the first cost is regulation. We have to have more electricity from, jet, from renewables. That's cost. Our labour market is subject to all sorts of rules and regulations from the European Commission. That's costly. There's all sorts of rules and regulations about products and substances that come from the European Union. That's costly. Uh, and that then I think the um, more and more important nowadays, there's regulation um, on the City of London on international financial services, which again is having major costs uh, for city industries. <coughs> I give a figure for these costs of over 6% of GDP, 6% of what we produce as a nation. That sounds like a large sum of money, it is, and I am prepared to defend that, because let me just emphasize this, this is very important. You will see that every single statement I make in here is not my opinion. It is supported by a footnote and a reference to an authority on the subject. All right? It's not me that said these things. It's somebody who knows what they're talking about. All right? The, uh, the, second, big, the second big cost is, I'm an economist, resources allocation. I know blind to the science. We pay too much for some of our imports, we don't get enough for some of our exports. Okay? That's what it really means. We pay too much for our food, we pay too much for a number of industrial products nowadays, the Commission has become rather protective in some areas, and so we're worse off for that reason. And then there are miscellany of things that have become important in the last few years. Um, obviously there's been immigration, mass immigration from the rest of the European Union. That has meant fewer jobs, for some people in this country, lower wages, uh, uh, lower, certainly people like building contractors having to compete with poles and so on, they're well aware that they're, they're getting less than they would have got otherwise. That has reduced the incomes of, if you like, the long-term British. There's been people coming here to use the NHS. There's been health tourism, as it's called. There's benefit tourism, where, you know, people come in to work here, uh, they get tax credits, Okay. Particularly that kind of level, from Eastern Europe, they come and they work at a little bit beneath the national average, they get tax credits, they send them home, you know, to Eastern Europe. It's a cost to us. 
And also, we have to make payments into various EU funds in case Greece goes bust again. That's a cost to us as well. So I added all these up, and I came in uh, 2012, the first one of these I did, to 10% of GDP. Nice round number. I didn't expect to get 10% of GDP, just what came out, you know, from all these different sources. Wasn't, as it wasn't my, my point of view. The treatment of GDP was Patrick mentioned, you know. My mate Patrick mentioned. The, 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 all of these figures came from other sources. They didn't, I said, I said why I put them in there, okay? We are poorer because of these indirect costs. They are huge costs. Now, how am I going to put time, by the way? The, 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 um, let me just make clear one point. I'm not claiming, I'm not claiming that as and when we leave the European Union, you know, tomorrow morning we're better off by 10% of GDP. We're really could be better off by that, you know, 1% of GDP which is what we pay to the institutions. The damage from the EU has been cumulative over 40 years, yeah. and particularly over the last 20 or, 20 or so years. Okay? It will take a long time for us to recover, you know, to, to, to get the right uh, energy policy, to overcome the effects of EU labor, labor, law, labor market regulation. All these things will take time. Um, but it's that kind of number that is the right kind of number to think about. We are much, much worse off because we belong to the EU than, than, than we, would, we would be if we had remained from the 1970s an independent sovereign nation. I want to close, and I, and I, I know we'll leave some time for questions and answers. I want to close simply by reiterating what what, what Gerard said um, in his um, in his own remarks. I'm in favour of free trade. I think that back in the early 1970s there was an argument of a sort for Britain joining the European Union, or common markets it then was, because there would have been free trade in industrial products with our European neighbours. Good. The truth is that nowadays that case is, can no longer be made for two reasons. One is the whole world since 1970s has moved towards free trade. In that sense, capitalism has won the debate, free trade has become the norm, China has become a free trader, you know, it used to be completely closed, communist and so on. And the other reason is that the EU has reached free trade agreements with significant nations outside Europe and that's all that we ever wanted. All right? Yeah. Most people in Britain did not want their country to surrender its sovereignty. They did not want to become part of the United States of Europe, you know, which you know we're just like you know Illinois or, 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 or Florida or something in, but we're just you know part of this United States of Europe. No, no, we want. We didn't want that. And um, the as uh, Gerard has very correctly highlighted. The Canadian agreement between the EU and Canada could also be between the EU and the UK. We continue to be friends with our neighbours, we trade with our neighbours, we need to visit our neighbours and so on, just as we want, we can govern ourselves. That is why we must be For the heaven's sake, look around the world. There are 170 countries that are not in the European Union. Let's just join them just like any other country in the world. So, we leave the European Union and then we can trade freely, happily in some of our neighbours. We can have what people have always wanted. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got the best arguments. We have got the best arguments. And the economics front, they're going to make sure we give them the best arguments. We believe in those arguments too. All right. I mean, I think one of them is kind of going to come out in the next few months. Is the relative, like, passion. I mean, passion is a cliche word, but the passion of the two sides. You'll see that the people on our side really believe what they're saying, on the other side, they tax. <laughs> Debate, and 
and Britain's going to become an independent country again. Thank you very much. Well, there you go. That wraps it up for this week. Uh, don't forget that you can learn more about the Better Off Out campaign on our website, www.betteroffout.net. Uh, we're also on Facebook, Twitter. We've got our own YouTube channel as well, uh, and so on. So if you're interested in working for Brexit, if you want to see Britain free of the European Union, check us out. Get involved. Uh, more the merrier when it comes to this sort of campaign. Uh, cheerio. See you next week.